Ask just about anyone and they can tell you their favourite plant. One of my favourites has long been the Clivias. They're just such beautiful, practical plants. From a designer's perspective, their strappy lush green foliage adds striking architectural form and texture. From a practical gardening point of view, in the shade they don't just grow, they thrive, even in deep and dry shade, making them brilliant problem solvers. With their low maintenance demands, they tick all the boxes for being ideal to include in a sustainable garden. And then you have the flowers. The divine blooms in vibrant oranges, subtle creams and everything in between bring welcome waves of colour to dark areas in late winter and early spring. Another great thing about Clivias is that it's so easy to get new plants from old to propagate them. You can divide up larger plants or you can grow them from seed. Now a few important things to remember. When you divide plants up it's like cloning. The resulting plants will all have the same characteristics as the parent plants, so same flower colour and foliage form and they should flower the year after you split them up. When you grow from seed who knows what you're going to get? You've added genetic diversity to the mix, so you could get all sorts of different flower colours and forms. They will, however, take quite a few years before you get to see what sort of flower they're going to have. Whichever method you choose, one thing's assured, it's going to cost you not much more than a bag of potting mix and a little bit of time, and you're going to end up with a lot more plants. This plant is well past due for division and repotting. Here's the giveaway. Look at the roots. You can't even see the potting mix anymore. And my timing is perfect. This clavia has a ripe seed head just ready for picking. I'll trim it off and save it for later. Well, it's time to get our friend here out of its pot. It's too overgrown, so I'm not going to be able to pull it out, so I'll have to crack it out. What? I'm a bloke. You don't expect me to use a tiny little hammer to put a small crack in when the opportunity presents itself to use an unnecessarily large hammer to smash something, do you? Once I've got that pot off, you can see it's just a congested tangle of roots. Time to divide our plant up. I'm looking for a cutting point that will allow each offshoot to still be a decent size and I need to make sure I get a large chunk of the tuberous root with each plant that I'm dividing off. I'm thinking I can probably get about three good plants off this and that includes the parent plant. Surely you didn't expect me to use some dainty little garden knife, did you? Now what I'll do is tease it all out to get rid of the old potting mix and the dead roots and all those that I've cut. We just want the offshoot and fresh roots. And there's our central parent plant. I've ended up with four plants from my original one. Now something you do need to do before you repot or replant these new cuttings is make sure this main tuberous root has stopped bleeding and the sap has dried and also that it's a nice clean cut. That way you'll reduce the chance of rots once your plant's in the ground. I also like to trim a lot of the leaves off the pup plants. It just keeps them more stable as the new roots are establishing. Time to put my newly divided plants into pots. I'm going to let them settle in there first before I decide what to do with them. Now it's pretty simple. Put a bit of mix into the bottom of your pot. Fill it about one third of the way. Then hold your plant near where it's going to be at its finished level in the pot and fill around it with potting mix. That way you don't bury it too deep. That's very important with Clivius. Once you've filled to the top, gently push the mix down around the roots. You don't want to compress it too much. Put your plants somewhere shady and warm and water them in well with a seaweed tonic. Here are the seeds stripped from that seed head. First step is to get the skin and pulp off the seeds. Then, give them a rinse and rub in clean water. What you'll end up with are these pearl-like seeds. Throw away any that are wrinkled or look damaged or diseased. You can just throw a whole lot of seeds into a seed tray. I'm going to use mini pots, however, and put about three or four seeds in each. I'm using a quality seed raising mix because you want to have good drainage. Sprinkle a little mix on top, just enough to stop the seeds from moving when you water. Don't cover them completely. And then, water them well. Put them in a warm, shady place to germinate. And there you have it. From one plant, I'll now have four larger garden-ready plants and in no time, over 20 seedlings.